What is up guys? 70 Savage here coming at you with a brand new video today. Today we have a very exciting installation of our 12 volt air conditioner. And if you are new to the channel, we are currently converting this Sprinter van right here to survive the zombie apocalypse. Nothing like cooling off after a long day of hunting zombies. In the middle of the summer, when you're in a big metal box, even if you have a ton of insulation like we do, it is not a comfortable place to be. As far as 12 volt off grid high efficiency air conditioners there are a couple of different options a lot of people are choosing to go for the roof air conditioners we are going to be mounting one underneath the van pros and cons for a roof or undermount air conditioner the roof ones are typically really easy to install because all you have to do is cut a big hole drop them in and then attach your electrical connections those units are completely self-contained so you don't actually have to deal with ac lines or anything like that the downside of a roof air conditioner is that is also the place where you generate your electricity that's where your solar panels are going to be and you're taking up solar panel real estate when you have a big hefty air conditioner up there some people also talk about the condensation that's generated by an air conditioner when it's located on your roof that condensation can sometimes drip onto your forehead while you're lying in bed definitely not something that's ideal the best part about the undermount air conditioners a lot of that condensation is going to be draining onto the ground the go-to high quality brand for undermount 12 volt air conditioners right now is cruise and comfort so giving you guys a little intro as to what this air conditioner install is going to look like we have three components that we need to install in total we have the condenser fan which we're going to mount underneath the van you can't see it from this angle, but trust me, we will be getting a lot more up close and personal as we get into that part. As we come into the van here, we can see this tall cabinet, which is completely torn apart right now, but it goes from ceiling to floor. And the bottom here is where our second piece of the air conditioner is going to live. This is the compressor, pretty small. It's about 12 inches by 12 inches. And if we look up towards the top part of the cabinet, we have the third component of our air conditioner. This is the evaporator portion of the air conditioner as well as the blower. This thing is what actually takes that cold air and blasts it out into the van. This model of air conditioner is called the VES Deluxe. It's actually not even on the website. The main air conditioner that people buy when they do go with Cruise and Comfort is the HD series. That unit combines the evaporator and the compressor so you're only working with two pieces overall. You have that evaporator compressor combo, and then you also have the condenser that's underneath the van. So this is definitely the most complex version of a cruise and comfort install you can get with the HD one being a little bit simpler, but not even close to as simple as a roof mount AC. First thing we're gonna do is mount all three of the air conditioners components so that they are rock solid and will not move anywhere, even when we're off-roading. The evaporator at the top of this tall cabinet here was very easy to mount. It has some screw holes in it and I literally just screwed it in. The compressor is also extremely simple to mount. All we have are these L brackets that came with the air conditioner. They screw directly into the air conditioner's compressor. And then there's a couple of holes, one on each side. We're just gonna put a couple of screws into the wood floor. And then the last component that we have to actually mount is the air conditioner's compressor. You can buy these with just a single fan if you're really strapped for space. You can see right now it's just held up temporarily with ratchet steps. I wanted to get it positioned correctly. What you're looking for when you're mounting this thing you don't want it to be hanging super low because obviously you don't want it colliding with rocks and things that you're driving over. The other thing that you need to do with this condenser unit is make sure that the small port is below the large port. There needs to be at least a 15 degree slant downwards for this unit to work properly. As far as actually mounting the condenser to the frame of the van, you can see these little doohickeys here. These are called plus nuts. They're very similar to riv nuts. All we had to do is drill a hole, insert the plus nut, clamp the plus nut down, and then we have a bolt location that we can use to mount things. Alrighty, we got the entire compressor mounted. We have two mounts on this side. We've got one more mount. I'm very pleased with how strong this turned out. I am going to mount some side steps to allow me to get in and out of my van easier, and those will actually drop below this condenser. Stoked that we are done with that part of the project. Now we are going to move on to the next step. We are going to do all of the electrical connections for this air conditioner. All right, so the electrical was pretty simple. We had four connections in total. The first one was this thermostat. The thermostat needs to make its way back to the compressor, so what I had to do was buy about 20 feet of this wire here that has six different wires in it. I guess you would call that cable just so that I can make the wire longer. That comes out back up through here in the tall cabinet. 
And then we have our quick connect, which connects directly to the compressor down here. Second two connections are both just positive and negatives. You need one positive and negative down to the condenser fan underneath the van. That's one of these white wires here. And a second positive and negative up to the evaporator, which is another one of these white wires here. They come with quick connectors. So those ones are literally just plug and play. So if you do have the dual fan condenser, you have a couple of options. You can run the fans in parallel, which makes them more powerful, but also a little bit louder or you can wire them in series, which makes them quieter, but a little bit less powerful. I opted to start out by just wiring them in parallel. And then the final electrical connection and the most important one is the main power for the compressor and also ends up powering the rest of the unit. That is these big four gauge red and black wires. Those make their way directly to our bus bars here, which are attached directly to our massive battery bank. Obviously you need some sort of fuse or breaker in between the compressor and the batteries. I opted for a breaker down here and that covers it for electrical the next and almost the final step is connecting all of the ac lines between each one of the units these big rubber hoses with the metal connections on the end of them are the ac lines now chris from cruise and comfort will make these for you now since i have the ves deluxe this part's a little bit more complicated because you have to get the whole circuit between the compressor up to the evaporator and then back down to the condenser fan back into the compressor to create a full loop. All you have to do is measure the different lengths and specify if you want an elbow or a straight connection on each side. These connections are pretty simple. They are just twist on and there's a little rubber gasket in the back of them. Alrighty, we got both of the condenser AC lines connected. We finished the two hoses connected to the compressor. And then the very last step as far as coolant hoses, we have these two right here. All the AC lines have different size fittings on them, so it's very easy to figure out which fitting goes where. This could have been bad. I just saw this little green O-ring city here, and I was like, that looks familiar. That looks kind of like what's supposed to be on the inside of these fittings. I unscrewed this one here and realized it was missing an O-ring. All right, so coming at you guys from the editing booth here, I realized that I completely forgot to film the installation of the air ducts, the things that connect to that blower and actually pipe the cold air out into the van. It was really, really easy. You just use the big hose clamps that are included when you buy the hose. I'll put a link to the white vinyl hose ducting in the video description below. The whole reason I actually got the VES model of Cruise and Comfort air conditioner is because I could keep all of the venting contained exactly where I mounted the evaporator. I did not need to make space to run an entire four inch duct the entire vertical height of my van. One more small step we are going to do on this evaporator unit. As you can see, these two ports, one on each side, all they do is gather the water that collects in this tray. Alrighty, so we got one tube coming out the front here, sloping down towards the back of the cabinet, other tube doing the same thing. And then when they get back here, you can see they're teed together to be one hose. Reason for that is I didn't want to pass two hoses through the bottom because I only have limited space. And then if you look down from the T, it comes down, 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 down. And it actually attaches to this PEX pipe here, the same stuff that I used in the rest of the van. And that just goes on the ground. Reason I did that is because I don't want it to get squished when it's passing with all of the other wires down there. We can go ahead and test this out. I'm gonna pour some water in here and see if it in fact drains correctly. All right, I see it actually coming out through both sides right now. And I hear it pouring onto the ground. All right, so the final step for this air conditioner, getting it charged has been the most difficult step, surprisingly. It's the only step that I'm not doing, and uh, I've called about 20 different car automotive repair guys. I scheduled a, an appointment with this shop that we're driving by right now, actually. It was like a week out, I show up, and they say, oh yeah, actually, we can't charge that one. So this is like a multi-week nightmare. If you do have one of these air conditioners, you're going to have to figure out a place to get it charged, and good luck. Teach class, right? This would be just fine. Perfect. So the the purpose of this AC machine is after it sits for about 45 minutes an hour, and they if the needles do not move, that means the system is completely sealed, and then at that point the recharging process can start. Mm. Okay, so first you're checking for leaks, and then you're putting coolant in. So this big machine here is simply just hooked up to the two ports that come with the air conditioner here. By the way, guys, apparently that machine cost $8,000 and you have to be pretty knowledgeable to use it correctly. So 
this is definitely not a step that y'all are going to be doing on your own. So we got it evacuated, no leaks, and now we are actually going to charge it. No, it's charged charge in. Oh, there's charge in there. Yeah, so charge in. Oh, so we got to actually fire the yeah. AC up. Yeah, it needs to be fired. Yeah, fire it up. Heck yeah. Okay, fire in the hole. Just do it from here. So we're firing this puppy up. We're going to see if it works for the first time. I actually don't even know how this works, so let's see if we can figure it out. Uh oh. Oh, all right, I forgot to turn the breaker on. Moment of truth now. There we go. All right, starting at 75 yeah, here, yeah. and uh, it's going. Hey! It's working. I'm fired up, baby. Compressor's working. The blower's kind of working. It's a little soft right now. Heck yeah, guys, we got it fixed. Simple reverse polarity, which was my fault on the evaporator here. But now it is blowing real hard. Don't be dirty now. And there is definitely some cold air coming out of here. Fantastic news, guys. We got the whole AC running and it is good to go. These guys were very cool and very nice helping out. They're also the only people in like a 50 mile radius who are even willing to do this at all. We are back in the van and it is a pretty hot day today. A good day to test this air conditioner out and see how effective it is. The weather report is saying that it is 85 degrees outside right now. If I look at the tarmac, it's saying 152. I guess it's pretty hot. And the shade on the tarmac, it's only about 100. On the white wall of the van, it's saying 100 degrees as well. Floor is saying about 96. As far as how it actually feels standing in the van right now, not comfortable at all. Right now, I feel like a hot dog that has been left in the car. Not a hot dog, but a hot dog. Air conditioner is kicking up. Let's just set it to a solid 70 degrees. When I'm standing right here next to the cabinet that has the evaporator and the compressor in it, and our fan is on maximum speed, it's pretty loud, to be honest. You have to talk a little bit louder than normal to be heard. Hopefully you guys can hear the comparison of the sound that thing is making versus my voice right now. It's about as loud as if you turn the sprinter on and you stand outside or right in front of the engine bay. While we test this out, I'm gonna swivel this puppy around so that we can hang out in here. When you're sitting in this chair, you basically have the output of the air conditioner pointed directly at you. Other nice thing is I got a rotational air vent here so I can point this anywhere that I want it to. I can tell you one thing that when I put this cabinet back together and the wood is kind of insulating the noise of the evaporator and the compressor, that's gonna be a whole heck of a lot quieter in here. While we are waiting for the van to cool down, I can give you guys a little overview of our electrical system. We have over a thousand amp hours of batteries. We have 670 amp hour batteries in total. It is a 12 volt system. Since this is a 12 volt air conditioner, it runs directly off the batteries. It does not need to run through the inverter, which is fantastic. So I use my phone to make YouTube videos, but also on my phone, I have an app that I can check the battery level and how much time left is on the batteries based on the current load. So I just took a look at the app for myself and it looks like we're pulling about 60 amps which is pretty much exactly what they say it's gonna pull and with our massive battery bank we could leave this air conditioner running for 16 hours straight that is pretty cool to me a huge component to this test that is massively heating up the van right now are these front windows I don't have my insulated window covers for this van yet so you can feel immediately when you walk into this area how flippin' hot it is due to the heat coming through these windows. Thankfully, the Arctic turn windows that I installed aftermarket in the van, I got two of them in the back there and then two of them in the front. These are dual pane acrylic windows, so they already have good insulation value as is, but I have slid up the window screen and obviously I have insulated this van. So we are dealing with some decent insulation value here. All right, so we have ran this test for 30 minutes now. The thermostat is reading 85, so it has definitely dropped in here. And let me tell you, it does not feel like 85 degrees in here. It feels like 75 or high 70s maybe. It is absolutely not hot, not nearly as hot as it is outside on the tarmac right now. The walls have dropped to about 85 degrees. The output of the air conditioner is coming out at 53 degrees, which is pretty dang impressive if you ask me. The floor has also dropped quite a bit, all the way down to 83. And that concludes our test for this cruise and comfort air conditioner. I'd say it's pretty dang effective. Way, 
way better than just using these fans on their own. In hot weather, you are not gonna wanna be in your van unless you have a real air conditioner. So as I travel in this van, I'm going to continue to test the Cruising Comfort air conditioner, and I'll be updating you guys with the results in the travel videos. That being said, I am pretty pleased so far. I'm not like insanely over the moon impressed. I think when you're looking for a van air conditioner, you need to be realistic with how many BTUs 8,000 is. It's not gonna cool your 120 degree van down to a crisp 70 degrees, but it is going to make a massive difference with the overall livability. If you're someone like me who works on the road, this is pretty much a night and day difference. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned something from it. If you're interested in seeing more van build videos and you want to see me travel around in this van, slap that subscribe button below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.